Okay, I'm going to do a film today showing you how to fit seal kit NT3359K. This field kit is fitted to the large majority of Nuffield and Leyland tractors. Um, the seal kit consists of two lip seals, felt seal, and no ring. Um, I'm going to give you a quick insight on how I do it. So the first thing is obviously I've renew, removed the nose casting. I have the PTO ship stripped out uh, and cleaned. So the first thing I tend to do is simply slip the O-ring on. As you can tell with this casting here, I've already um, I've cleaned it prior to the starting, so it's lovely and clean. Um, a thing to note is there's two lip seals. The lip seals go in, both go in the same way and there's a felt seal that sits in front within the housing. It's important to fit the lip seals first, then push the felt seal in later, which I'll show you. If you've got a tendency of dropping the felt seal in like that, and then trying to push your seal down, you'll just trap the felt seal inside and it won't seal correctly. Um, so what I've got here, I've got a, a little alley mandrel that I've made up, a little dolly, that allows me to push the first seal all the way home because um, obviously it, it sits down within this cavity here. So what I'm going to do for the first seal, I use a little bit of uh, grease around the edge of the seal just to help it all in. Drop my dolly in. I've got another mandrel here as well. I use I use me I use me a little hammer. Changed hammers. So we just right, so I've sent that home on like the first step down. I turn my little dolly over and the dolly is obviously slightly smaller than the outside damage to the seal. Um, the outside damage to the seal, I believe from memory is two and a half inch. So obviously it's just slightly less. So then I'll put my dolly in. Now, and carefully. You want to just be careful to centralise it. Obviously, if you've got access to a lathe, you can make as posh mandrel as you like. That's going in. As you're doing this, you can obviously, you can check. Um, as you can see, mine's not gone all the way home yet. So it should drive a bit more. Now, I don't know if you can see or not, but I can see that the seal, the shoulder of the seal's not just quite gone up that face there so I should drive it on a little bit more so what you don't want to do is uh, go mad and crush your seal I can just see it's just still on the far side with that I'm going to give it one more belt for look yeah and that's 
is driven home. So what we'll do now, put the next seal in. It goes in the same way. Just drops in the cavity there. mandrel I've made is bigger on one side so I can drive it down to the flange face with inside the housing on this quite easily. So we're driving the seals home now. This is not the most exciting film I've done. Hopefully it will help people out. Not looking bad at all. Almost happy with that. And I suppose I will have to be happy with that now. So, as you can see, hopefully on my film, uh, there's a void in there where the uh, felt seal sits. And what we're going to do, we're going to press some grease into this felt seal. This is probably the most important bit, is that, like I say, the felt seal goes in last. You don't try and put it in before. So I'm just rubbing the, the red grease in. The reason it's red is just because it's uh, GT160, which is just a high melting point grease. Um, and basically what I do is I force the felt seal into the cavity. Being careful and sort of not to twist it. I sort of just roll it in with my thumb really. Just to make sure it's all gone in, it's not twisted over or anything like that. So obviously all that felt seal is going to do is just provide a uh, a dust seal really for the, the, the two lip seals behind it. It'll stop any, you know, sandy soil or whatever getting at the seals and sort of ruin them. Um, and what I'm going to do at this point, I should just lubricate the lips of the seal as well. well I've got some grease in there. And that's really it. All it really leaves now is for me to refit the PTO shaft uh, through the housing. Now I'm not going to go any further on this video because there's two types of PTO shaft but basically you're going to put the uh, shaft in from the back. This is off a of Leyland 272. So once I've put the shaft in from the back there's a spacer ring that goes on behind the back of the uh, bearing and then there's a, a circlip. So that'll go in, followed by this. Hopefully you'll find this useful.